Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I've put together three incredibly pointless guitar experiments. Have you ever wondered what it would sound like if you overdubbed the same thing 201 times? Have you ever wondered if it takes less time to fish a pick out of a smaller bodied acoustic? Have you ever wondered if making a face while soloing actually influences the music? Someone's got to find answers and I'm that someone. Before we get into it though, if you're looking for something that does provide actual musical value into your life, you can check out my course platform, samuraiguitartheory.com. I've released two courses over there that look at music theory starting right at the beginning, working up to more advanced topics. These courses detail the way that I conceptualize music. I tried to create the resource that I wish I had when I was learning this stuff. I've still got some promo codes left over from the last sale. Use code microtonal at checkout to save $50 off the two course bundle, getting you both courses for the normal price of one. You can find that over at samuraiguitartheory.com. I'll also put up a link in the description. Anyways, let's get to it. Experiment number one. What does it sound like if you overdub the same guitar part 201 times? There's this production trick that I use fairly often. Say you record an acoustic guitar track. Well, if I record that exact same part again and then pan both tracks to opposite sides of the stereo spectrum, it can create a really nice effect. Check it out. You might wonder, well, why don't you just take the original guitar track, copy and paste it, and then pan that to the other side. If you do this, the brain plays a trick on you that makes it seem like your sound source is right in the middle between your two speakers. But if I play the same thing the same way twice, the waveforms will never be a perfect duplicate, which gives you the effect of having the same guitar part on either side of your head. So knowing this, I wondered what it would sound like if instead of playing the same guitar part twice, I played it 201 times. Why 201? Well, my recording software allows me to pan a track between the values of 1 and 100 on either side or put something right in the middle. If I were to put a guitar overdub in every single value, I would need 201 tracks. I've never heard this done, so yesterday I set about recording the same thing 201 times. This was a fairly time-consuming effort that took the better part of my evening. Even though what I played was a very simple open chord progression, the amount of focus required to play something like that the exact same way 201 times takes its toll on the mind. I found myself reflecting upon many of my life choices during this process, but the thrill of unlocking the mystery of what this would sound like kept me motivated. Now that this is all said and done, I'm very excited to listen back to the results. Here, my friends, are 201 guitar takes of the same thing panned to every available value in Pro Tools. If I'm being honest, it's pretty underwhelming. I feel like I could have put a stereo pair of mics on my 12 string and gotten more or less the same effect. I don't even want to think about how long that 20 second video took me. As a bonus, I also recorded an additional 64 tracks of me playing different variations on the same chord progression to see what that sounds like. Why 64 this time? Because that'll make a nice 8x8 video grid on the screen. Here are 64 variations of the same chord progression played at once. That actually sounds kind of cool. Absolutely not worth the effort and a totally pointless experiment, but kind of cool. On to experiment two. Does it take less time to fish a guitar pick out of an acoustic guitar with a smaller body? For this experiment, I have three guitars. Well, two guitars and a ukulele. I have my normal size Gibson. I have my parlor size smaller body Art and Luthery and my tiny little uke. The experiment was conducted as follows. I set a timer, dropped a pick inside my guitar, did my best to retrieve the pick, and when I got it out, I recorded the results. I then did the same thing with my smaller guitar, and then finally my ukulele. This was all repeated nine more times, giving me 10 trials in total. My theory was the smaller the body, the less space for the pick to get lost, and the less time it would take me to fish it out. Let's see if the data supports that. Up top, I've got which guitar I was fishing in. On the left is the trial number, and all those numbers in the middle are the seconds it took me to retrieve my pick. On average, it took me 26.44 seconds to fish a pick out of a normal sized acoustic, 18.41 on the parlor guitar, and 7.67 seconds on a ukulele. It would seem that the data supports the hypothesis. If you care to watch me perform this experiment in full, you can find that over at my second channel. I'll link to it in the description. 
Now in a perfect world, I would have repeated this experiment multiple times to make sure that the results were repeatable. I also would have used acoustic guitars that were identical besides the size. But remember, this isn't great science. This is an incredibly pointless guitar experiment. In the next and final experiment for today, I'm gonna to attempt to figure out what impact making a guitar face while soloing has on your music. I'm gonna break this down into two parts. In part one, I'll improvise over a backing track while making the stankiest of blues faces. I'll also improvise over that same track while remaining totally expressionless. I'm not gonna tell you which order I'm gonna play them for you. I'll also be censored out. See if you can figure out which is which. If you thought my first track was the one with Guitar Face, you would have been right. Take a watch. Certainly interesting results. While playing with Blue's face, I found myself tensing up, holding my breath, and trying to dig in more. To my ear, this is reflected in the phrasing, the looser time feel, and the tone. When I played with a straight face, I feel like the phrasing was more thought out, the timing was definitely tighter, but a certain sense of the emotion was lost. Let's see if this holds true in the second part of the experiment. Now I'll play the exact same pre-written solo twice, once with stanky guitar face and once without. Again, see if you can figure out which one is which. <laughs> This time, the second one was the one with Guitar Face. So this experiment definitely highlights something interesting that surprised me a fair bit. Check out the waveforms. When I'm playing with guitar face, I'm consistently slightly ahead of the beat, whereas playing straight faced, I am more in time. When I was playing with faces, I was really trying to go for it. I was tense, I was holding my breath, things that I guess sent my body into fight or flight mode. My theory is, evolutionarily speaking, if we were faced with imminent danger, our perception of time would slow down, allowing us to think ever so slightly faster than our predators. My brain was reacting faster when I amped myself up via guitar face, making me slightly ahead of the beat compared to when I was totally calm. That's just a theory though. Really, what do I know? Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Three incredibly pointless guitar experiments. What can we take away from this video? Not a ton, but hopefully you found it entertaining. Remember, there's some promo codes left from the sale on my last video. You can learn my system of making music from the ground up over at samuraiguitartheory.com. Don't forget to use promo code microtonal to get both courses for the normal price of one when you buy the two course bundle. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and leave me a comment. If you wanna check out another video like this one, you can hit that link up there. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for more guitar related content. Until next time, I'm Samurai Guitarist and I'll see you again soon.